Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have spent all my life in Bradford, worked at Leeds University, worked at Bradford University, and now I'm a director of Education for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, a center we've set up at Leeds Beckett University with a parallel center in Beijing in China, who've made me a visiting prof there. So what I want to talk about, Education for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. See if this works. Oh, yes. So the basis of this is around a whole number of projects, which we call GEM projects, they're diamonds, uh, but it actually means giving education meaning. And one of them, which I'll talk about later, is called robot rallying. Uh, so the big thing that we're all going to face, and we're all in the middle of, and our young people and our grandchildren, or my grandchildren, anyway, are is presenting to them is that the world in the next 20 years will change more than we've ever seen it before. And that was, uh, that was going to be true before what happened at Parliament last night. So uh, it'll be even bigger, as we've already heard. Uh, and the changes are being driven by technology and science. And other people have referred to that. All right. Uh, and so what we're going to see is that the physical and mental work that we do will mainly be done by artificial intelligence. Be done, well, we, we use the word robots there, but basically computers and computerized mechanical systems, which we call robots. So the first industrial revolution replaced horsepower. And what we saw with steam and steam engines, and the whole of Bradford was covered with steam engines, covered with people using this newfound form of energy to drive all their machines. And this is a picture from SALT, actually. And so what we're seeing now and what we're going to see in the next 10, 10 years uh, is that th the list of people here uh, from the, the doctors, the lawyers, the GPs, the accountants, doctors, perhaps not nurses, but doctors, because in, if you've got a robot that's connected to the internet, every time you've got a, you know, I've got green spots behind my ears, what's going on? Uh, the robot will know everybody in the world who's got green spots behind their ears, and they'll be able to tell you the right things to do, whereas your doctor might have never met green spot behind the ears before. So, but what you do need are you need the t people like the nurses who link you into the machines and ask the right questions and make you feel comfortable. Uh, and we're going to see also in the next, uh, in the next few years, self-driving vehicles. And, so, and that's going to be the most dramatic thing that we'll see in our everyday lives. It's quite likely that large cities like London uh, and possibly even uh, Bradford and Leeds and, and Keithley uh, will say, we, you only have driverless cars in our cities. We don't want accidents. And you might decide, well, I like driving my cars. Uh, we'll, go and, we'll go for a holiday in Iceland and drive around Iceland or something. But I think uh, what we're going to see is basically that it will be a liberation for people who are disabled and don't drive cars, or young people or old people, uh, in, in making transport much more ac accessible. And we're actually working with uh, Daimler, or Mercedes-Benz, as they're called here, um, to develop their... Uh, uh, transport and the way in which people can move around uh, using self-driving vehicles and how people will interact with the cities to do this. <clears throat> and so what we see now on production lines are robots doing things. What we see, this is a concept car done by Mercedes-Benz. Um, uh, 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 this one actually has a driving a steering wheel in it, but what they're making, what they're talking about now, won't have steering wheels. This is one that's already operating. Any of you have taken your cars to Heathrow and wanted to and park in the airport and to find the plane and the and the terminals, you'll be taken around on one of these self-driving vehicles. Uh, <clears throat> but the, what? So what we see and what we're likely to see is that it's reckoned that about 50% of the jobs that we now have will disappear. And so where will the new jobs come from and what will happen? We're reasonably sure that the new jobs will come through science. There's an explosion going on in science, whether you're following the Chang'e uh, thing going on in the back of the, in the far side of the moon, or you're just using your uh, mobile phone to help you drive from here to, uh, here to uh, Ilkley or somewhere. Uh, space is an enormous part. Uh, we've already had health measured 
health mentioned and what we're seeing with the genome and all the, si the implications for health of our science developments. Uh, and also what we could do and the impact on that uh, of, so I'm talking about the good side of it, but there's also, it does enable you and empower you to deal with the difficult parts, uh, many, which is some we've already had mentioned really in many ways, mental health, which I think we have to address. But not having a future is an enormous impact on mental health. You've only got to go around the schools in Bradford. And I don't think it's untrue to say that 50% of the kids in our schools today feel totally disaffected. They're saying, where's this education taking us? What's going to happen? I'll be joining the gig economy, hours only contract. I won't know how much I'm going to earn this week or even tomorrow. And it's no future. And there's nothing that you can have, you can look forward to it. We've got to give our young people a future. And the future economy is likely to be, is, will be built on science and innovation and creativity with a vast amount of things that are going on and being developed in science. And it's, uh, Oh, uh, yes. And so it would be dealing with the new, new things. Let me, let me go on. So, but we, what we really need is an education system that deals with innovation and creativity. What we have at the moment is an education system that you listen to me and uh, go into the exam and write down exactly what I've been saying and you get a good mark. It's absolute rubbish. It's useless. Robots are much, much better at... Uh, being create, uh, uh, writing down what everything that I've said or everything the teacher said or what needs to be done in the exam. What we need are people who are creative and innovative. And to be creative and innovative, first of all, you've got to have the freedom and the confidence to try and do it. You've got to also recognize the value of diversity and the value of working in teams. So when somebody who, uh, uh, perhaps, well, girls and boys for a start, that the, the boys actually listen to what the girls are saying. Uh, and if you're working in a team, learning how to listen to what people say. We actually are destroying creativity in our education systems. And so we want everybody to look the same. Uh, we're, dis we're removing a lot of the courses, the arts courses, the drama courses, and the science. We've removed one of the most creative areas of science, which is, which is practical science. Practical science is absolutely essential for giving people confidence to work in science, to try and do things, uh, and to be creative. What we, what we need is, uh, is an education system that does all these things. It was just, in a way, like the first Industrial Revolution. In the first Industrial Revolution, you had people who could grow corn. You had people who could look after sheep. And what we had to do in Bradford, we had to, tra we had to educate them uh, so they could run steam engines, the thousands of steam engines we had instead of electric motors in Bradford. And you could also operate power looms. And so we needed a completely different approach. And that was led by Bradford, by people like Forster, his statues in Forster Square, and Osler, statue in Osler Square. They were the people who propelled education and to say that what we need, uh, what we need for education changed and were behind the Education Act uh, that took place in the UK. And so what, uh, what we want in the new economy and what we want to give our young people uh, a faith and a, an idea in what we can do in the future and ideas for the future is to give them the confidence to actually work in, work in, oh, has it gone off? Uh, all right, uh, work in new ways to be innovative. So we've been developing these what we call GEM projects. These are open projects where there aren't particular answers. There's lots and lots of different answers. And so the robot rallying one is a, is a project uh, in which we address the problem of self-driving cars um, of what we call the urban complexity problem. So when, you, when you're driving a car on the motorway in a given lane, but it's not too difficult and actually by ne this year on next year and already you can buy trucks in the United States that you the driver picks up at the uh, in New York in New York picks up the load in New York drives it onto the freeway and then goes to sleep the truck will drive all the way to uh, San Francisco 
and they can uh, then drive the truck out to where it, the factory or wherever they're taking it to. They'll drive on the freeways and the motorways, but what we really need are vehicles that will drive down streets which have bicycles, which have prams, which have buses, which have trucks going all over the place, and, and that sort of thing. Urban complexity, uh, the urban complexity problem. And what we want to do with the urban complexity problem is give the, the young people or we don't mind whether they're young or old, the challenge and set it up using new technology in a way that when people have good ideas of how to do it, they can record it and they can, uh, uh, the, the ideas can be attributed to them and they can get the benefits of it. So the new economy will be riding on, uh, will be riding on ideas like that. And am I going forward? Oh, right. Is this going forward? Uh, well, yeah, we can do it again. Oh, well, I've caught up to robot rallying, yes. So what we're doing with robot rallying, um, we're setting it up and we want to, we want to use vehicles uh, and we want to take out the computing problems because the actual, um, the actual computing, again, everybody talks about coding, but the coding will all be done by robots anyway. But the ideas can't be done by robots. And what we want to do is to separate the ideas. So we want something like this, which is a, uh, a little uh, car that you normally would drive with a radio control. And we've thrown away the radio control, put a camera in it, some computers, and set up the software so that people can use the ideas uh, and just put the ideas on without having to code. They can implement the ideas. And this has actually already been done in China. Uh, uh, with a very simple system that just addresses the problems of running around a track and racing around a track. And what we want to do here is to set it up a, a very similar system, but we'll actually, use, uh, we'll actually use tracks with other vehicles on them and we'll use tracks with other things that we can set on and run uh, nat national competitions and international competitions to do it. So uh, here's the, uh, this is an example of, oops, sorry, it's gone on. How do I get the next bit to go? New. How do I get this to show its, uh, to show? Well, anyway, this is the track. And if this machine, uh, uh, if I press one of these, it should just start, but it goes on to the next slide. Uh, have I got a pointer? Nope. So, well, uh, the idea was that uh, the net, if I clicked it again, oh, there we go. Go on, click it on the left hand button. There we go. <laughs> The sound actually works. So you can see that little car rushing around there that's completely driving itself around there in all the things. It's actually a lot, lot simpler than it looks. Look at the lighting levels. Look, the fact is walking, the student is walking around in bare feet to keep it really clean. But actually, that is very good. There you go. Thank you. So we'll do better than that. We'll have urban complexity. Thank you.